Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Digital Nomads Daily Podcast. I'm your host, Nikki Nina, and I will be bringing you real life experiences of the digital nomad lifestyle. On the podcast, we will interview digital nomads from all over the globe. In each episode, we are sharing unfiltered stories about the not so sexy stuff of this lifestyle. So get ready for some horror stories, nomad adventures, and helpful tips to make your digital nomad lifestyle more fun and a little bit better. You can find all episodes, show notes, tips shared by our digital nomads on digitalnomadsdaily.com slash podcast. Like I said, my name is Nikki Nina and I'm a digital nomad myself. A lot of the nomad stories that are shared on this podcast, I can probably relate to one or two. Again, welcome to the Digital Nomads Daily podcast. Let's start the episodes. Today, we're going to talk about digital nomad couples. I'm interviewing a digital nomad couple from Israel. A quick fact, they were not a digital nomad couple before. They were a normal, regular couple, and then they started their digital nomad journey, and they really took the leap together. Welcome, Anna and Or. So I got some quick questions before we dive into like the podcast interview. So how long have you been nomading? Seven months. Yeah. We started on April. We planned on doing it for about four years. <laughs> yeah, so my next question was, were you a couple before you started nomading? So I guess the answer is yes. The answer yes. is yes. <laughs> Long time before. <laughs> we actually like high school sweethearts. Yeah. Oh, really? What do you guys do in like a daily life to sustain yourself? So I am a yoga teacher and I'm building my online business and I as well like I do all our digital social I don't know how you say presence like we have an Instagram page for like we documenting our travels and talking about the digital nomad lifestyle as a couple. I also started offering guidance to people who want to start this journey as a couple because when we started we had a bunch of problems that we figured out how to deal with them and after we have done that it felt so much better going into this this is something we need to share so i'm started like doing that a little bit Mm -hmm. but i'm mainly building my businesses while or is already working Yeah, I just took the job that I've been doing in the office in Israel and just took it uh, on the road. So I'm a software developer in a company and I practically stayed at my same, the same role, but the contract shifted a little bit. So now I work on an hourly basis, which means I'm more free with my time Mm -hmm. and with the time zone also, Uh, but still the same, same job. Yeah. Wow. It's so nice that you both have very different areas of work, because I think also when you're part of a company versus when you're like more in the entrepreneur scene and building your own business, a lot of things might be different as well. So it's also cool that you that you can help each other, but also that it's like a little bit different, that you're not always in the same sort of wave. Yeah. yeah. I think it would have been very frustrating if we both were building businesses at the same time. <laughs> I don't think it would have ended up well. Yeah. And also, if we, we would have worked on the same business, this would have been really 24-7 being together all the time which is another hurdle I think yeah I mean we are together 24 7 all the time but doing the same thing as well and not having different things that you need to do different separately that's that's more time together I know like I talk with a couple that does everything together they work together and they travel together and they do they are stick to each other all the time and they manage to make it work I know a lot of couples that that will break them but you really have to be a couple for that I have also one nomad friend uh is a couple as well and they are doing it they've been together for nine years or something they built their own businesses i think they have multiple businesses and it's really cool how they do it but i also lived with them actually for two or three months during the start of the pandemic in europe and it was really interesting to see i was like wow i was taking a lot of notes because it was almost i don't know <laughs> it was just oh, very it sounds like something you want to like, like a take crash it. course it was cool i i feel like because of that i am better in my relationship right now so i'm gonna have them on the podcast as well all right so 
Those were some quick questions. So we already tapped into this a little bit. 24-7 together. How do you have me time, quality time? How is that in your relationship? Can you walk us through how does a week look like so our listeners can sort of visualize this? Yeah, so I think, and we've talked about it before we actually got on the podcast. And I think we realized that we have three different types of time during the week. So you have time where it is more like a me time or an individual time. It doesn't have to be time where we are physically separated, but we're doing different things. We're not really reacting or communicating with each other. For example, most of the time during the day when we work. So Anat works on her businesses and I work with the company and we're not really interacting a lot. So it's kind of me time, but also can be time where we are doing our own hobbies or passions when Anat is practicing yoga or I'm a guitar player. So when I'm Ah. creating music. So this is one type of me time. And the other type is more of a quality time together, which is not every time together would be quality time. Labeled as quality time. Sometimes it's just being together, but more of an idle time. Yeah, like watching a Netflix show together on the couch or eating lunch together, but not really doing anything else besides. But you can do the same things and it make it come quality time together. It's more of an intention of what you do with this time. Because we can watch a Netflix show and make it like, oh, hi. (laughs) We have a nomad cat. Hi, Vanilla. Vanilla, I love it. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Quality time. uh, Yeah. So quality time. We can watch the Netflix show and watch it more, passing the time or escaping reality to something else, not really paying attention to each other. Mm -hmm. Or we can watch it in a rainy day, which we have a lot of right now in Thailand, and make it a cuddling time, a cozy time, watching the show with a hot drink in hand and snuggling against each other Mm -hmm. and making it more of like doing the same thing, but having a different intention behind it makes it different. So you can be 24 or seven hours together but you can still like or said you have the different types of time you can have the times when you are together but you're not really talking to each other so you're sort of alone yeah it's like a mental and physical kind of how you spend your time together i recognize that because i'm often next to my partner but we're physically together but mentally we're like in different zones yeah I know of a couple that for them, it was very hard being in the same physical space all that time. So they, the way they manage that, they just rented houses where they can have two separate rooms. Oh, we have that too, yeah. They needed the physical separation to have their me time. We are good enough when we just feel like there is enough space that's good for us. Mm -hmm. We feel like we can have that. Yeah. But each couple has their own set of things that they need to feel that. Another thing about uh, quality time is that one good that we found out is very good for us is like expand the types of things that we do in, in, on quality times. That is not just, you know, watching Netflix. We found new hobbies that we both like to do or new skills that we both want to learn. Yeah, we both want to learn ch- uh, Japanese, Japanese. So, so we, we do it yeah. together. <laughs> or surfing, which we do together. Sweet. I really love the concept of different times and the immensely being in a different space. I actually, I'm while you're talking, reflecting to my own relationship because I super relate to that. I haven't voiced it like that. Actually, talking about time because you guys were a couple before you started your nomad journey. There's been a long time together as high school sweethearts. What changes or very significant changes in the relationship do you see from before and where you are now? I think the biggest change is not something to do with our relationship per se. It's more of the things that we need around us were not a big issue beforehand. When we lived back home and we had all our friends and family there, we just lived as a normal, (laughs) what is normal? We lived as a couple, we did all our thing. And I think we were pretty good at communicating our needs anyway. And we're after 13 years together, you get to know the other person and you get better of doing things that you both love and being supportive as as a spouse. But when we started this journey more the things that a human being needs in general to survive mainly like connection with other human beings they became more sparse being able to talk to a friend 
sometimes just going only with your girlfriends or with the boys to do something. Yeah. It changed our relationship in that way that we realized we can't survive just us talking to each other. We can't be alone together. It's still too lonely. You can't survive like that. Yeah. We found ways of making connection with other people as we go because the downside of traveling as a couple is that you are units and it is challenging engaging in conversation with different people. Single life travel is way more outgoing and outspoken to meet new people as yeah. a unit couple it's mm -hmm. getting a little bit more tricky i think i really felt it because we both traveled alone even during our relationship i traveled in uh, nepal nepal and china and i'm not also in, in the in, area in the area <laughs> and it was much easier when i was traveling alone to connect with people and to form other groups to find more friends and as a unit you are more closed off even unconsciously you're more closed off with your boyfriend girlfriend i feel you on that because i know my dad as a single for really long, I've only been a couple since a little bit over a year now. And it's so different because yeah, when, also <laughs> when people are, you know, want to be friends with you, a lot of the friends that I have right now here in, in Rio, they're all couples. Even though I'm in a couple, I don't always have to hang out with other couples because then I really feel, oh God, I'm dirty. It's happening. <laughs> so I think it's a very, very big difference of finding friends when you're not even single, but yeah. just alone or when you're together. Yeah. yeah, definitely. There is a closeness. You're close to each other, but you're close to people around you. So you have to intentionally break it. You have to go out of your way to make connections, to start an awkward conversation with the people sitting in the table next to you in the cafe or going on a weekend to sleep at the hostel, even though you can afford fancy hotel room because at the hostel, it's so much easier yeah. meeting new people. Those are things that we try to do sometimes. When there's listeners right now that we are struggling exactly on this topic, how are we going to find community and also sort of find community for yourself? Can you give me, well, you already mentioned like two very important things, like hang out where other people are. So it's easier to kind of break the habit of be together than the whole time. But maybe three takeaways that we can give to our listeners of like, okay, if you're struggling with this right now, here are three things you can do to kind of break that cycle of struggle. So I think I have two. Maybe we'll find a third one along the way. The first one is exactly what you say. You need to put yourself in social situations that will allow you to find connections. Uh, parties, it can be uh, going to a hostel instead of like a secluded room in a hotel and then be outgoing find yourself talking to people the second thing is more of creating initiatives it doesn't have to be in person we found that a lot of times even sending a message in a facebook group of nomads or expats around an area can create a conversation that leads to meeting new people eventually in real life definitely yeah i think connected to that going to and doing events that you enjoy and love trying to see if other people are interested in the same thing. I always ask about if people want to do yoga with me for a new place that I come to. When we travel to do a hike or a trail on the mm -hmm. weekend, we try to always put a post on a local Facebook group saying that we are going, maybe you're renting a car, does anybody want to join us? Like weekend mm -hmm. trail, things like that work, not all the time. Trying it. It's okay. It doesn't cost anything. You yeah. you just put yourself out there. I love yeah. that. I think the overall message that I hear is just take initiative. If you struggle, yeah. if you identify some sort of uncomfortness, just do something about it and don't wait and sit around yeah. and just whine. And being a couple, like, I feel like some people find it very awkward talking to other people and trying to get a connection and doing that initiative. But being a couple, you can have this burden together you can like do turns of okay i talked to people last time now you go <laughs> i'm definitely worse Dude. in this kind of situation and that is always encouraging me i did it last time you post it now <laughs> if i would would have been alone i would never no like, but if you were it. alone you would have met people naturally it's maybe all right so when you're together and you really feel like it's time to get some alone time how do you go about that process 
I have my answer. Like, so you go for it. Okay. For me, yoga is a very big part of my life. Whenever I feel confused or overwhelmed, I just need to find myself. I go and I practice. And I don't have to be apart from all to do it. Just lay down my mat in the house in a separate room and do yoga there. And for me, that is enough. Allows me like to connect with myself. Yogi talk, I know, but it really helps me. And that's my me time is on the mat. But a few years back thinking about myself, I'm probably other things I would have done is just going out for a walk to nature and finding a spot to be in and walking alone, doing things you don't do a lot, but you gain a lot from them. Taking a walk, slowly thinking about things without really thinking about them. That's me. That's a really good one. Yeah, I think I can relate to what Anat said. With my own set of hobbies or practices, for me, music will be like yeah. the, the way to, to be alone and to be with my own emotions or with, with my own thoughts. So I also rarely, I think, need to be apart from Anat to find some alone time, but I really need to leave everything aside and be mm-hmm. able to just play. On the rare occasions where I really need to clear my head and be alone, I probably just walk somewhere even do an errand but do it alone like yeah, go to the that's groceries that's a really shopping. good one yeah. <laughs> doing the things you need to do anyway but doing I them mean, alone that's it nice. sounds it sounds like so mundane <laughs> doing grocery shopping is amazing man i love doing yeah. grocery shopping alone it's like meditative it's so good <laughs> yeah, cooking, especially cleaning yeah, cooking. the house going shopping i think for grocery so- shopping it's better if it's not in our like own native country because it's, ex- it's even a little bit exciting, like going into like a 7-Eleven store or a grocery store yeah. Yeah. in Thailand. We really like it. I really like it. But I think this is the kind of thing that helps me clear my head. Do something really like day-to-day mundane thing, but do it alone and be with my thoughts. All right. So we have a couple of minutes left. Let's do the next questions. So my first question is, how do you decide to go next? So... Before we started this journey, we thought of the things we want to do, but being a digital nomad, a few of them were learning to cook a bunch of different cuisines and surfing all over the world. We wrote a bunch of countries we would like to visit and travel to. We really want to go to Japan to see the cherry blossom in March and April. We don't know if they will allow people to enter. So we make Mm -hmm. plans around it. So basically, we never plan too much ahead. We have a list of places that we would want to go that fit some of our checklist. And uh, then uh, in a month notice, usually we just choose a place that is permissive according to all the COVID restrictions and we just go for it. Yeah, Yeah, I think if we were traveling without COVID, we might be planning a little bit more ahead. As things are now, you, with a month ahead is the best you can do. Okay, that makes sense. I, I feel you on that. Yeah. All right. I think our time is almost up. Why don't we go to the last part of the podcast where I always ask my guests if they have a question for me. Yeah, I know it's not really connected to what we talked about, but I'm very curious. How did you go from being a digital nomad that travels on her own to traveling as a couple because from stories I heard of like singles ladies trying to date as a digital nomad that's a very hectic scene it is yeah I love that question no one ever asked me that I think well I think the one thing that we talked about was the freedom that you have as a single is very freeing but it's super lonely as well for me that was kind of my comfort zone for like a really long time even when I met my partner I felt like I wasn't ready to be settled person in a relationship but I've also never experienced the other side of it right being actually in a relationship so basically what happened to me was COVID I was living in Portugal and then there was this guy which is now my partner that I met like very casually I was supposed to be his housemate and it was just like instant fireworks and that was really creepy because it was not that sort of like single sexual fireworks kind of vibe where I just wanted to have fun with him. There was something else in that energy. I was neglecting it. And then at one point we started dating. We have been together since the day kind of we met every single day. And Mm -hmm. I think for me, it's the best thing that happened in my nomad journey. But one thing is that 
or we give each other the community that we need, but also the freedom that we need. When I go have fun with my friends because I love being social, he gives me all of that. So now actually being in a relationship, I feel really free and safe, maybe more free than I was when I was single. But it all comes down to being with the right person. He is my person right now. I think I was guilty of having a huge stigma in my head around couples. I'm still exploring a lot and the need of exploring myself is so big. And I'm in a relationship where I can do that. What a lot of people might not realize is being conscious about yourself, about your job, about your relationship, about your environment, about what you want in life. That's so important. So it's, it's a fun ride, but it's a conscious ride as well. And I think that's like, Also something to end this podcast with for our listeners, whether you're a nomad nomad couple or you're an entrepreneur or you're in a job, like just be conscious about what is it that you want? What is it that you need mentally, physically, your heart? Before we left for our journey, we had so many things that we were afraid of. We spoke about them, but it didn't really connect. And we found our way. We did like a declaration of all the things that we want to need and all the safety net that will help us. But making the things conscious and making it so we both are aware of everything that we want and we need to feel safe in this journey and to enjoy it, Mm -hmm. that really helps take all of the fears away from this and just start to enjoy it and be excited for it. And now that we live it, it's helping us keep going. So, not drowning in fears and worries. Yeah, and being able to change things up when things are not going well. Love so that. So it's really, really important. Yeah. That's so cool. All right. Thanks so much for, for sharing all your knowledge. And also before we leave, I just want to make sure that people know where to follow your story, where they can go. Can you please share all your social media? So we have our Instagram page, Spice and Toast. I also have my yoga page, Anat Yoga Life. Pretty soon we hope to have a blog, but it's not on there yet. So you'll just have yeah. to check our Instagram and see if it's li- right. li- alive or not. <laughs> It was pretty, pretty yeah. fun and interesting. Yeah. It was really yeah. cool to meet you guys. I, I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Uh, thank you. All right, my friends, this was it for today. Thank you so much for joining this episode. I truly hope that this was as fun, as helpful for you. I for sure really, really enjoyed it. You can find a recap of this episode and all tips and tricks discussed on our website. Just go to digitalnomadsdaily.com slash podcast. Give it a like if you enjoyed this episode. And if you're a nomad yourself and you want to share your story on our podcast, we would love to meet you. Just send us a message on Instagram. That's at Digital Nomads Daily or contact us via our website. Yeah.